how health system science will untangle. That's so witty. Um, wicked health. Okay. Oh my goodness, who's that? Oh my goodness, who could that be? Oh, I spoiled it. It says me in fifth grade. I spoiled it. I had lipstick on, so that was a very special day. On the right was my elementary school, Lincoln Elementary in Portsmouth, Ohio. And the reason why I'm mentioning this and showing this picture, this is when I discovered that I was a systems thinker. In fifth grade at my school, there was a fifth grade speech contest, okay? And students were selected to develop speeches, I suppose like a TED talk. I must have done far better in fifth grade than I'm doing now. We had international pen pals. We wrote letters. This is before you sent emojis. We actually did write physical letters, okay? So my pen pal lived in Vienna, Austria. So Vienna, Austria is certainly different from Portsmouth, Ohio. It was a social network of two, me and her. One, two. It was my friendship dyad, and that's kind of one of the phrases we use in networks, but that's what I was doing. And in the contest, I decided to make a poster. And so I put all of the continents on the poster. I should have had my mom do it because she's a great artist, but she made me do it. Um, and above it, I see I made a red bow connecting all of the continents together. And the title of my speech was Tie a Bow for Those You Know. That was the name of my speech. Okay, and so I told my teacher, it's like, that's exactly what this letter is doing for me. You know, I'm being connected to this young lady that I've never seen, and we've only communicated with, le but through letters, but I was like, I really dig talking to her. You know, and so in fifth grade, I was talking about links and nodes and homophily, which is birds of a feather and our our differences, social differences, and physical difference, all of those things are social network analysis. I bet I was doing it in fifth grade, and I didn't need all of those fancy words, right? Because actually, if you're really doing true systems thinking for all of us, we do not need fancy terms. We don't need the dynamic images. Perhaps all you needed was those continents with a bow connecting all of them to get that system's point across. But ultimately, I did win the contest. Yeah, I did win. But what I really found out and what I learned in that experience is that our relationships are mappable. And I'm calling these mappable bits. And bits you can just define as just objects or units of our reality, okay? But I was able to map our relationship, whether I could have mapped perhaps in, in a chart how many times we communicated with each other. Um, that poster was mapping, okay? And so mappable bits of human complexity. Unfortunately, she stopped writing me, okay? When she stopped writing me, I was devastated. And so what that left me to do is try to impute ideas of what might have happened. We all do it, right? Systemically, I'm trying to figure out, well, I did this, and then she said that, and so I'm building all of this, but in the end, I never really found out why she stopped talking to me. But I was blessed with an opportunity to learn that the world is really dynamic. And if you go away with any phrase tonight, all right, somebody's writing it, thank you. <laughs> all right, systems thinking is really there to help us understand how dynamically human we are. That is what system thinking is supposed to do in its truest sense. So being human, in my opinion, is the embodiment of a lot of bits, whether that's our bodies, whether that's our, our words, bits of information. And we're gonna broaden our definition of information. Sure, when we communicate, that's information, but we can communicate in other ways, bodily, through emotions, okay? So just broaden our definition. 
and they're all tied to systemic factors. And a system changes. These are interconnected elements that work with and against each other, right? And so that's what being human is. Sometimes it's just freaking difficult, right? And sometimes you're wondering what factors are at play that's making your life so difficult. Why? It's because you're being human and there are those systemic factors. And so I say that we live in an elegant, ordered, sophisticated universe, which is simultaneously wicked. Okay? I think my son made the rocket right there. Um, by wicked, I mean these are problems with no ultimate solution. And so it's wicked being a healthcare provider as well because they're constantly working with bits of information from their patients. Some of the bits they know about, but a lot of the bits they don't because they're not disclosed and when we are living our lives, that's what health really is. Health is navigating in a very weird, complicated world and just trying not to mess ourselves up too much. Okay, And it's also going to be wicked being a medical student because now we're telling them that they need to orient their understanding of the human condition in a wicked way. And so again, we call it health system science. And they do call it the third pillar of medicine. The first pillar is basic science. The second pillar is clinical science. The third pillar is now called health system science. Because our lives are wicked, we need to also understand that we're physical beings. Okay? Sometimes we compare system to, phys to physical systems. And we heard quite a bit about physical systems tonight. But physical systems, there's no cognition, there's no social influence, there's no ethical struggles to deal with, right? That's why it's wicked. A physical system, we have at least some idea of how it's supposed to work. There may be some variation, like all of my chemistry experience. I just told them it's a variation from the norm, okay? It wasn't quite right, but it's just a variation you at least have some idea how a proton's going to work. You have some idea of how the kidney, kidney reacts. What you don't have any idea about is why your patient cannot get to dialysis. Perhaps it's because their only caregiver has to work during that shift and can't take them. Or maybe they've just decided that they don't want that to be a quality of life, that they don't want to go to dialysis because it's more difficult. Okay. And I said, we are not cells, we are composed of them. We are a pile of aging bits with agency that navigates a complex world. And those are from diagnostic tests. They're able to measure those. They're able to give um, physicals, okay? But they have no idea what's happening at home. They have no idea what's happening on your job. They have no idea that you lost your support system. But perhaps you need to let the physician know. Did your mother or father ever say, get out of my beeswax? Have you ever heard that phrase before? That essentially means get out of my business. Okay, And for some people, getting into the intimacy of their lives is get out of my beeswax. That's very uncomfortable for some of us. So it's going to be a learning curve. Okay, It's going to be a learning curve for these new physicians to have the sensitivity and the ability to get to those unseen bits, but it's also going to be a change for us as patients because these physicians are going to start asking you questions and more questions and perhaps coming into your homes and asking more questions, and that's going to be a change for you. When I talked about making systems decisions Often we talk about making rules, okay? Making a rule for a patient is giving them directives, okay? And those rules are based on the illness that they're dealing with, what they need to get healthy. But what we need to understand is the rules are not made for the, the public that has to serve under them. The, 
the patient has no ability to input into what those rules are. Okay, and that can be quite difficult for us as a loss of agency, as a loss of self-efficacy, as a loss of our personal liberty when we're told to do something. And so the, we're going to have to build that savvy, that sensitivity, okay, knowing that some of us are going to be resistant to um, rule making that's in, um, even in complexity based. We are in an age of big data. Some of you may be in data science now where you love the fascination and the beauty of all of these data points. But remember, each data point, if it's social, that's a person. That sometimes gets, sometimes gets lost. All of those data points in a social network analysis graph, each of those people has children, has a life, has disadvantages or advantages. Okay, so in my opinion, our bits are lived and living data. It's just not big data. Health system science is there to extract those unseen bits. And for me, that's getting to the crust of how people are living. So our data equals living. And to the end, it is wicked indeed. Wicked, 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 wicked. I use that word a lot. So I'm saying healthcare ties a bow. You get it? You get that? Ties a bow of these seen and unseen complexities. Okay. Jurgen Habermas, who was a political philosopher, once said that there are three domains in which we exist in the uncertainty of our world. The first one is the external physical world. The second is our internal world. And the third one is our social world. And what we often do in order to make sense of our world is we concentrate on one of them. We're going to concentrate on your physical body or we're going to concentrate on your spiritual awareness. But when we concentrate on one, what he says is that the other two are there. They're like shadow assumptions that we're completely forgetting about. And so health system science maybe is biting off of what Habermas is trying to get at here. Okay, we can't just look at one element of the system. So to end, so there's great responsibility for the new clinicians who are being asked to see our world from a complex point of view, but there's also a power that patients have felt that they haven't had. Okay, you felt like you're being told rules. Right, But in health system science, we are building a network, a system of collaboration. Ideally, that's what we're going to do. And so what we're hoping is that your bits will be healthy, your bits will be whole, and that's what health system science is trying to accomplish together as a network. Thank you very much.